And today I've got a special guest. I have Jeff Balky. See, I did that with uh, sound effects, I guess. Maybe we'll put some in there. Hey, Jeff, thanks for being on the show. I really appreciate it. Tell us about yourself. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I, you know, I, I was looking forward to this. Um, well, it all started a long time ago when my mom and my... No, I'm not going to go that far, but... <laughs> we have 15 minutes, Jeff. Come on. <laughs> 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Um, <laughs> No, actually, um, I started on MySpace, if uh, you remember that website from way back in the day. Oh, yes. <laughs> and um, I started putting some pictures up there that I drew, some black and whites. People seemed to like them, but they wanted something more. They wanted to see more colored stuff. And I'm like, Ugh. I didn't want, I did not want to color. I wanted to be in the limelight. Hey, come on. Let's, let's be honest here. Uh, like a lot of people do, they want to be like the man. Yeah, right. Well, right. As soon as I put up some colored stuff. Uh, people started liking my stuff more. They started loving. I put up my first piece with Spider Man, you know, a whole three, you know, two colors basically. And back then, you know, it caught on fire. It was like, you know, 30 likes and more comments. And I was like, oh, I, maybe I hit something here. Yeah, right, right. So then I started putting up some more colored stuff of my own work, um, of, you know, the superhero characters. Didn't have any of my own at the time. And it just really, really started blowing up. And I got hired by a small company. To do an entire book for comic book for free, uh, which I, I didn't care because I knew as soon as I had that book, I can now go to all the big guys and say, hey, this is my book. This is the this is what I worked on. And it's a company, you know, not just a state. Right. It gives you some leverage. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. And fast forward a few years, I met Raven Gregory uh, from Zinescope. He gave me his business card and said, I want to talk to you. So I worked for Zinescope for five years. Also, I got to work with, uh, I, I did Deadpool, not Deadpool, Deadpool, Winnie the Pooh and Deadpool mixed. So that's, that's Pooh with an H at the end, just being clear. Deadpool. <laughs> and, um, but I worked for Storm King. For, I worked for Storm King. I worked for, worked with Image. Uh, did a couple covers for Marvel. Um, I mean, I've done, I've done so much in like, I think it was just 10 or 11 years that I was working in the comic industry full time. That was my full time gig. And of course, going to conventions, meeting people, which to me, I love that. I love being around people. I just, I don't know why that's, I think that's like a family trait because everybody in my family likes doing that too, which leads to fast forward a little, little bit more. I'm, at, I'm going to Megacon uh, actually here in Florida. And I sat up and I said, you know what? I said to my husband, my boyfriend at the time, but now my husband, I said, I want to have my own animation studio. I want my own characters. He says, what? Half asleep. He's not even awake yet. And I said it again. And he's like, okay. And then he puts his head back down. That was the start of the studio right there. That was Very the whole cool. big you know? <laughs> And because we were down here in Florida, Disney and all that, you know, so we went to Disney and I was looking at things through different eyes technically because I wanted to do this as a profession. And I started looking up and doing a lot of research, which I'm still doing. There's so much that I've learned and know, but there's so much that I don't know. Especially when it comes to the digital side, because with my studio, what I want to do is I want to keep the cell animation alive just a little bit. I mean, it's, it's, uh, I know it's kind of dead. It's, but however, it's not that dead because Claws that's on Netflix right. was all done play, all by hand. Well, if, if you think about it, if you go back even a few years ago, stop motion was pretty much dead mm -hmm. and then it had a revival and it became kind of a big thing. And yes, they yeah. integrate some digital into that integrating digital i get it but i i get why you'd want to keep that that 2d thing alive for sure yeah man. right i because I, I think that's something that's something that i grew up with and that's something that a lot of people the saturday morning cartoons you know that's what we all grew up with and you know i miss that i sure. just miss that that feel for uh that kind of animation I, mean, I like 3d but just right now i don't want to do all the 3d because there's a lot that really does go, go into that i don't know which one has more 3d or 2d because you've got to have like 10 million people to do an animation in 2D. <laughs> right, right. 3D is kind of the same way. You got the modeler, you got this person, this person. Oh my God, just craziness. Yeah, actually, as a family, we watched Onward last night and the credits went on forever. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> doesn't matter if it's 3D or not, man. It takes a village to make these animated films. So I get it. So you have a 2D animation. Is it a studio or are you just like a gun for hire with that? Um, it's a studio because what I want to do with it is basically exactly what Walt did back in the day. I want to create, I've got my own characters. I've got my own stories, my own worlds, uh, if you will. And I want to start putting those out there. Uh, kind of like the silly symphonies and kind of like, you know, the Mickey mouses and, you know, those kind of. Yeah. Making shorts. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and then selling those off now also doing work as well, you know, hire, you know, for hire. Absolutely. Um, I'm definitely not pro, you know, not against it, but, um, the main focus of course is making big featured films. That's really why that's really where I want to go with this. And you have stories for that already? Um, not for the big features, some of my shorts that I already have written out and everything, I can expand on those. And I did that on purpose. Right. Even my, my comic strip, my weekly comic strips, same thing. You know, I can expand on those to make them into shorts and possibly even full feature films. So let's talk about that for a second. You've got, yeah. uh, bulky comics. Okay. And then bulky publishing. So bulky comics, that is you just alluded to it. Is it is it a comic book or is it like a weekly strip? Is it a web comic? What is it? Bulky Comics is actually comic books because we're going to have our own books after we do this one that we're that we're doing with Storm King, uh, Storm Kids. Um, but it's going to be comic books and a weekly comic strip, and it's going to be a, a I would say a newspaper strip, but unfortunately, there's really no newspapers <laughs> around. <laughs> right, right. So they become web comics, right? Yeah, essentially. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So that's Bulky Comics, Bulky Publishing. I also have uh, our very first kids book already in the works as well, too, and actually working on our second one already, uh, which kind of goes side by side with the first. It's kind of like I would say it's kind of like one long, continuous story, but it's not. It's my own version of fairy tale land. Okay, cool. So that was actually going to be my next question. What is your it's not easy to say what is your comic about because you have a number of projects, but what your wheelhouse is kind of the kids thing. It's the fairy tale thing. Is that what I'm getting? Um, not, not all of it. No, but you know, definitely for the, uh, for the publishing, for the kids books. Yes. It's going to be fairy tales. I'm going to be integrating some of my own characters also within there. Not right now, but like, right. Everybody knows who like Alice in Wonderland, Red, you know, Red Riding Hood. I have to do stuff that people have already seen, but I'm not retelling the stories that we've all heard 4,000 times. So for instance, uh, in the first kids book is what happens after Red Riding Hood leaves her grandmother's house. After she finds out if she's eaten or was she? Sure. You know, it's, it's that kind of stuff. And the second book is actually Al- features Alice in Wonderland. Again, our version. I say R. I, I just always say R. I don't like saying my, my, my. You know, I don't like saying that. But the second book is actually Alice in Wonderland. And I'm introducing a brand new character to Wonderland that has never been out there. Lewis Carroll never came up with this character uh, from way back when. I'm very excited about this, and I'm trying to make sure I do it right. So this one might take me a little bit longer, but we still got the first one in production, which should be coming out later on this year. Okay, cool. Very cool. Um, So here we are at your dream con. Who is it that you would be most excited to meet? I don't know. (laughs) And I, I, it's a dream con. Walt Disney, actually. Well, okay, if he alive, yes. Yeah, I'm calling it a dream con. It's everything's open to you. There is actually one person who I would love to meet. Uh, I got real close a couple times, and it's Floyd Norman. Okay, Floyd is the first African American animator who worked for Disney. There's a few others that are there too, but Floyd was there, and he was kind of doing like the in betweens and all the grunt work, basically. Sure. He is one person I would love to meet. He's probably got great stories, right? Yeah, I know. I, I like talking to those guys because you no, know, they're they have a lot of stories. They have a lot of great insights. Sure. Of how it used to be to how it is now. You know, Floyd still works. You know, in animation. You know, he's gone digital. Uh, he worked on Toy Story. Oh, wow. He went back all the way to 101 Dalmatians, Sleeping Beauty. Wow. Uh, and so this man has done. Oh he's my been there God. forever. Yeah. I mean, I think he's, he's pushing 90. He looks like he's 70. You know, I mean, he's because he's happy. He loves what he does. And that's what I want to figure out. What is that happiness? I think I know what it is. And it's different for everybody, of course. You know, that one thing everyone always talks about. Yeah, right, right. You want to find out what his one thing is, right? Basically, basically. But I mean, just to sit and talk with them, I just think it would be amazing. 
Now, do you have a Patreon or anything set up? Because I know that starting a studio, trying to get all these projects done, it takes money. So do you do it through Patreon or how do you do it? No, right now, no Patreon, no um, no crowdfunding. I tried crowdfunding before. It was a, for me, it was a flop. It just didn't, because I don't have the names to back me up. Okay. And because I'm not doing fan art. I'm doing my own stories. I'm doing my own characters. Nobody really knows who they are. So I got some people who liked it, but that's as far as it went. Sure. I had a couple of backers here and there, but again, nothing nearly what I needed to even get one, even minute and a half animation done. Sure. Uh, you know, but I have, you know, I'm on social media, you know, of course, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all bulky at bulky studios. I'm going to be starting a Twitch very soon, or I'll be doing some hand coloring live. Um, I also do that on Facebook, but I'm trying to steer away from Facebook a little because a lot of my viewers and a lot of my fans got a lot younger and uh, they don't have a Facebook. They have Twitch. They have TikTok. They have YouTube, of course, but I can't even go live on YouTube. I don't have enough subscribers yet. Right. Um, but I can still put stuff up there. So I'm trying to hit like a whole different market. And, you know, coming out of comic books, going into animation, having my own studio, there, there's no pamphlet or book transition over right you're making it up i get it i am so how do people get in touch with you that, that want to support you or just even supporting you just by viewing your work and sharing it how do they do that actually you can go to jeffbalkystudios.com and up there um, on our website you can go to our facebook you can go to our all those places i just named up all the different social media outlets that we have you can like the pieces, you can share them. You know, that's kind of the biggest thing right now is just me really just trying to get the word out there. But I can't do it without the help of you guys out there, uh, which is why I love doing these interviews because, you know, you, you're helping me a lot as well. And, you know, I'm very grateful that we're doing this interview and I can actually talk about what I have coming up, what I'm doing and where people can go to uh, share and like studio stuff. That actually is the next question. What have you got coming up? What are the projects you've got that you're involved in right now that you want to let people know about? Yeah, and absolutely. Uh, the, the biggest one as of right now is uh, the comic book, the one-shot Halloween comic coming out uh, through Storm Kids coming out in October. Uh, really looking forward to that. So it's my own characters, our own story uh, that we're putting into this comic book, our very first comic book, uh, which is being published, again, by Storm King Comics. Um, coming out in October. That's the big one. Uh, we have weekly comic strips, which is always on our Instagram every Sunday. So that's Instagram.com slash Bulky Studios. Usually I, I post them in the morning, anywhere between like 9 and 10 is where I try to, or 8 and 10 is when I try to keep them posted. So they're kind of, you know, people can go, oh yeah, there's comic strip today. Yeah, right, right. But there's that. I'm talking with an animator right now to actually work on a an animation also for October. Something completely different than um, what's in the comic book. This is something I've been trying to get done for about three years now. And other animators I've, I've worked with, they just gave up. I don't think it's because, it's not because it's too difficult, but it's three characters. So I think that might be the problem. Okay. I might have to shrink it down just a little bit. Maybe have two, but I can't, I, I can't go any less than two. Because it has some dancing and stuff in it. And it's all about skeletons. So it's uh, it's it's a it's just a very fun project, and of course the kids book. Um, there's a few other projects that I have in the pipeline, but I got to start kind of cleaning up some of this stuff first. Sure, sure. A lot more. It's way too much for one person to do. <laughs> so with with all these cons that are canceling or postponing, what do you think is the best way for people to support a creator like you? If they do like like with me, for instance, you know I don't have a Patreon. So if you go on Facebook, you go on Instagram, you go on uh, Twitter or any of the social networking sites that, you know, that I am on sharing, liking, definitely sharing, just letting people know, Hey, check out this guy's stuff. You know, um, I've had some people on Twitter and I've never really posted stuff on Twitter, but I've got people who are now retweeting a lot of the things that I'm posting up there. That's a big thing. You know, it's not all about the money all the time. I mean, yes, it makes the world go round, but it's not all just about the money. It's about getting the word out there. Sure. And, I know that a lot of people, I've seen them, they're, look, people are getting laid off work. They don't have the money right now. You know, money is very tight. Even though stimulus is and stuff like that, you know, it's going to be coming out hitting people. That's got to go for food. You know, that, you know, that old thing. Uh, toilet paper, if you can find it. Uh, <laughs> you know, 
it's got to go for other things. And so that's why I always say sharing is caring. I know this sounds very cliche, kind of weird, but it's true. I mean, that means more to me than just getting the almighty dollar. Makes sense. It makes sense. Well, I tell you what, Jeff, this was a lot of fun to talk to you. I really look forward to the projects you have coming up. You've given your social media. Once again, it's Jeff Bulky Studios, correct? Correct. Yep. And I'll put all this in the show notes. So people definitely should be following you. They should be watching what you're doing. And you're open for collaboration, it sounds like. Yeah, I am. I'm going to I'm gonna start looking for more animators and more people to work on comic strips and comic books coming up in the very near future. Fantastic. And you can also check out Jeff's work coming up in October at Storm Kids, Yay. a project I'm <laughs> definitely excited about. So thanks a lot, Jeff. I appreciate having you on. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Thank you so much. You can find Alley Chats on Facebook by searching for at Alley Chats. You can also visit us at our webpage, smgpods.com slash alleychats for links to all our episodes and other cool stuff. One easy way to support our show is to rate and review Alley Chats wherever you listen to your podcasts. Those ratings really help us out and help others find our show as well. Alley Chats is produced and edited by Rob Southgate for Southgate Media Group. Be sure to subscribe to Alley Chats because you definitely don't want to miss an episode. Thanks again to our affiliate sponsors, Hunt a Killer and Tweaked Audio. Links to them are on our webpage and in the show notes. This wouldn't be possible without them. Our theme song is by Benny and the No Goods. Check out their awesome music at bennyandthenogoods.bandcamp.com. If you're an artist, a writer, or a creative type that would have a table at an artist alley and would like to be on Alley Chats, message us through the Facebook page or email us directly at southgatemediagroup at gmail.com and we'll set up an interview. Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll be back tomorrow with another fantastic show.